music of Traviata is so intense. It's so passionate. It's just, it's real. It's so intimate that it becomes epic. One of the things that Alexander Neef said to me, people often make the mistake of setting Traviata in grand palaces, when actually it's a piece that takes place in small rooms in people's homes. And that was illuminating for me. It sort of brought it down to a very human scale. Aaron Arbus came to my attention as director of Shakespeare plays um, on and off Broadway in New York. Um, and we decided to partner with Houston and Chicago to entrust to Traviata. And Erin is a wonderful director with, with great ideas. She gets great acting performances out of her singers. She brings a lot of ideas that you wouldn't normally think of in opera. And, you know, I, I, I like different. It looks very traditional. The costumes are, are very period. The gowns are huge. Uh, I'm gonna die if I have to drag that around. I mean, it's, they were massive. Yeah, very much looking forward to it. And I'm, and I'm sure the audiences here will really enjoy it as well. I don't think there's anything you need to know before you come. If you don't know the piece, that's great. And you should just come with an open heart and don't prepare. I'm so glad that we can open this upcoming season with a project which I would describe as um, more innovative. We have music by Monteverdi paired with music by a Canadian composer. So we go to the, to the fair ends of repertoire on both sides. Barbara Monk-Feldman's Pyramus and Thisbe has nothing to do with the Pyramus and Thisbe you know from It's Summer Night's Dream. It's a very serious piece that explores the inside of those characters rather than the comedy of that play. I was first inspired to write the opera Pyramus and Thisbe when I saw the painting by Nicolas Poussin. When I saw the Poussin painting, I knew right away this was a subject for an opera. So the music focuses on the interior landscape of the singers, uh, of the characters, the two characters. We're the Canadian Opera Company, and I think it's very important for us to support not only Canadian artists, but also Canadian works. Well, I'm a Canadian opera singer, so for me, uh, singing something written by a Canadian, a living Canadian composer, is, is extremely exciting. In Barbara Monk-Feldman's music, colors made through chords and instrumentation change and morph as colors change in paintings. I wanted to treat the orchestra like a secondary chorus. So the chorus envelops the characters, um, supports their, uh, the emotional intensity of the work, at times it withdraws. The thing I like about Monteverdi was that uh, for someone who is basically inventing the operatic genre, he set the bar pretty high. Not only is his music very beautiful, it's a true melding of music and drama the way opera was and is meant to be. I think we are very fortunate to have a, an orchestra here that always loves the challenge to switch between styles and to kind of bridge centuries. I think it's important for our audience to discover that a new piece can be as exciting. If we take that leap of faith to put on a new piece, I would like the audience to take that leap of faith too and get excited. The journey of Siegfried is a journey of learning fear. Siegfried, of all the, the ring operas, is the piece where we go from the utmost darkness to the brightest light. It's a little bit as if we had exploded um, the set of Rangel and Valkyrie uh, in, in, and suspended it over his head as if we were exploring the psyche of, of Siegfried. Because Wagner was so involved in every aspect of writing this piece, it is impossible to mistake what he wanted you to feel, what he wanted you to see, and the colors that he wanted coming from the singer.
When it comes to that, like exploring the character, I think the, the, the source is the text, it is, the, is the piece, is the music, is what Wagner wrote. Conducting Wagner is so exciting. The orchestra is the main mean of expression that tells the story. Johannes Debus is a remarkable colleague. He makes you feel very safe. With Wagner's music, you're always put in a state of, of ecstasy. It's an incredible form of excitement he's able to create. And that is something I cannot avoid. There are a handful of women in the world that get to do this, and I get to do this. It's a miraculous thing, and I'm really excited and really grateful for it. What our goal is, is to make all of those things ring as one element, one heartbeat, and, and allow the, the, the theater to go out of gravity. I think I've sung this role perhaps 40, 50 times. And in fact, it was my European debut in Monte Carlo. I think it's my favorite Mozart opera of all time. It's genius, it's funny, it's sad. <laughs> it's a desert island opera for me, yeah. Mozart and Da Ponte just give you everything on a silver platter. It's so easy, you feel like, like she could be my best friend, she feels like she could be me, my sister. She's, the experiences are so universal and um, it's, she's really fun to play. The, the freshness of, uh, of uh, Figaro, I think, lies in, um, in its perfection. Klaus Gut's production of Marriage of Figaro really was the toast of the Salzburg Festival in 2006 and has been revived numerous times. It's one of the most successful productions of a Mozart opera that they have done in recent memory and we were very lucky to be able to purchase that production for the COC. The reason I sympathize with the Count is that he's searching for a deeper truth in spite of the fact that he's entitled and is with one foot already in the firmly planted path of aristocracy, but he's searching for real humanity. Figaro is again one of those really perfect operas. For me, maybe the most wonderful of all the Mozart operas. We all should leave the hall uplifted and energized. Herman. The opera of operas. It's wonderful to have Anita Rachvillishvili back for Carmen. She debuted um, at the COC with that part back in 2010 and has become a very, very famous singer in the meantime. I'm excited. I'm excited to be back because I love this city and I love working here. I'm looking forward to working with the world's greatest artists that the COC brings. And when you combine that with the COC chorus, and the orchestra and the incredibly professional production department. I think that's just kind of setting it up for a dream opportunity. What Joe Oliveni is going to do with our Carmen is he's going to give it back a real sense of urgency and maybe novelty even. I think the, the music, the melodies in it are just those magic melodies that just uh, transcend Time. And strong characters, and yeah. it's a lot of fun actually because you have everything. It's a mix of flamenco dancing, it's uh, fighting on stage, emotions, women energy, man energy. It's just amazing. You have to see Carmen because it's Carmen. It's kind of a win win. You can't go wrong. You have to see Carmen at least once because it's, it's a passion happening on stage. It's, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs>would never have thought to program a serious Rossini ever, but then I saw Maometto Secondo in Santa Fe and it just blew me away and I thought this is something I would like to share with our audience. I love Rossini's music, but though normally of course you associate him with opera buffa, comedies, but this is a serious opera and one forgets that actually he wrote some really deeply serious music. There's no better singer for the title role than Luca Pizzeroni. You know, it demands natural authority, it demands a flawless technique, and Luca has all of these in abundance. Everything excites me about Maometto. It 
took me years actually to prepare for this role. For a bass baritone, it's one of the most uh, exciting, challenging roles that you can find in the repertoire. I am a huge fan, fan of, of David Alden and Harry Bickett, and I can wait to work with them both again. Harry lays the foundation for you to do the best job that you can possibly do. I think because I've done a lot of earlier repertoire with the orchestra, it's going to be helpful to do this Rossini because often people approach Rossini from now, looking backwards, whereas I tend to look at it from what happened before Rossini, looking forwards. I don't think we have enough time to talk about David, David Alden. I adore David. And if there was one word to define David, is crazy. And it's a good crazy. Yeah, I don't mean crazy crazy, I mean really good crazy. It's extremely exciting to take part in an opera that isn't as familiar to audiences that they might be coming to for the first time. I think it's gonna make for a really exciting night and I'm super excited to be a part of it. It's awesome. It's just awesome. There's no other way to put it. It's just awesome.